Previously, we've seen how we were able to get an ion from an insoluble salt to precipitate out by adding in a certain concentration of the counter ion. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that up a step and we're going to actually separate two different ions from the same solution. And how we're going to do that is by utilizing a difference in their solubility. Here we're going to be playing around with a solution that contains uh, cadmium 2 plus and nickel 2 plus and we want to separate out both of these uh, ions from the solution. What we need to do that is a counter ion that will form a insoluble salt with both of these cations. So S2 minus will form the insoluble salt um, cadmium 2 sulfide with cadmium 2 plus and nickel 2 sulfide with nickel 2 plus. And we're going to be utilizing this fact to separate out the ions in the form of a precipitate. So basically we're going to get one of these to form first, we're going to remove it by filtration, and then we're going to get the other one to precipitate out and remove that by filtration. So how we're going to do this, we have two parts of this question. The first thing we want to know is which one of these two insoluble salts is going to come out first. And uh, how we're going to do that is by looking at the minimum concentration of S2- that's required to uh, get it to precipitate. And once we're done with that, we want to be able to understand how efficient our separation was. So we're going to find out that cadmium sulfide comes out first. And the next part of the question says, after we're done getting the cadmium 2 sulfide precipitating out, how much of the cadmium will be left over? So right before our second salt comes out, so this is uh, nickel 2 sulfide is going to come out uh, second. Right when that one's fixing to precipitate, how much of my cadmium 2 plus is going to be left over? So we want to be able to measure how effectively did we remove all of the cadmium from our solution before we started precipitating our um, nickel. So here I needed to give you the KSPs for both of our insoluble salts. And how we figure out which one of these two insoluble salts is going to precipitate out first is we look at the concentration of S2 minus that's necessary for each one of them to begin precipitating. So I look at cadmium sulfide first, so this is the solubility product, and what I want to do is calculate the concentration of S2 minus. So the KSP was given, the concentration of cadmium 2 plus was given, and now I want to calculate what's the concentration of S2 minus right at the uh, edge of precipitation. So with this, uh, the concentration is 9.0 times 10 to the minus 26. I do the same thing for nickel sulfide. So here is the solubility product. Uh, KSP for uh, nickel 2 sulfide was given. My concentration of nickel 2 plus uh, was given. I calculate the concentration of S2 minus right on the edge of precipitation. So that's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 19. When I'm done, I can do a direct comparison of these two numbers. Which one needs the sm a smaller amount of S2 minus? And between these two, the uh, concentration of S2 minus to get cadmium sulfide to precipitate out is much smaller. So that means cadmium 2 sulfide is going to precipitate out first. Nickel 2 sulfide will precipitate out later. Now the next point gets a little tricky. And the idea here is we're adding an S2 minus. At some point with that we've already calculated, we're going to begin precipitating out uh, cadmium 2 sulfide. And cadmium 2 sulfide is going to continue to precipitate out as we add SN2 minus. But we want to get out as much cadmium 2 sulfide as possible before we filter it off. And how we do that is we figure out what's the concentration of S2 minus that um, is right at the edge of the precipitation of nickel 2 sulfide. So we've already calculated that number here. So this is the concentration of sulfide when nickel 2 sulfide is just fixing to precipitate out. And we're going to take that number and plug it into our um, solubility product for cadmium sulfide. So what we're saying is if we raise the concentration of S2- minus right to the edge of the precipitation of nickel 2 sulfide, how much cadmium will be left over? So KSP hasn't changed. Now we're taking this number, which we calculated was the concentration right at the edge of for forming nickel 2 sulfide uh, precipitate. We're taking this number and plugging it in here and saying, at this point, how much cadmium 2 plus will be left over. When we're done, uh, the concentration of cadmium is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the minus 8th. So I feel like we've done a very effective separation. 
So at, at, right before we start precipitating out nickel two sulfide, um, the concentration of cadmium two plus is dropped quite um, quite uh, a bit. So it is decreased from 0 0.02 to uh, 1.2 times 10 to the minus eighth. So we've almost completely removed the cadmium two plus from um, solution. And now what's left over is nickel two plus, and we can get that out by continuing to add S2 minus. So it looks kind of like this. We have our original solution that has nickel two plus and cadmium two plus. We start adding S and, uh, S2 minus to it. And what happens is we get to a point, cadmium sulfide starts to uh, precipitate out, and we keep on adding S2 minus until it gets right to the edge of the formation of nickel two sulfide. And that's when we stop. That's the most cadmium two plus that we can get out of solution. Then we filter off the cadmium sulfide. What's gonna be left is nickel two plus in solution. And then all we have to do is continue adding S2 minus into solution, the nickel will start precipitating out, and then we can filter off our uh, uh, nickel in the form of nickel two sulfide. So in effect, we have separated out and removed cadmium two plus and nickel two plus uh, from this solution just by uh, carefully controlling the concentration of S2 minus.